So now what we're going to do is take a look at the new Thesis 2.1 skin interface. This is the site that we developed on Monday, right? The Barking Chihuahua Cafe. We made all of these style changes and this formatting of this site using uh, the design and the content sections of the skin. And we talked about sort of the general layout uh, and configuration of the this part of the interface on Monday. So if you didn't see Monday's videos and this is looking all new to you, go back and take a look at the um, launch party videos then and um, and watch those so you can get a good understanding of you know what some aspects of this interface look like now because I'm not going to be repeating that. What we're going to spend essentially all of our time today in is looking at the skin editor. Now, skin editor is found under the skin menu. We come over here and click editor, and we can see the skin editor. Actually, before we go to the skin editor, I'm sorry, I wanted to show you one other thing. Um, we have the skin editor, but we also have custom CSS. And custom CSS is has been moved in Thesis 2. It used to be under the editor. In 2.1, it's now here in the skin section instead. And we will actually be using this custom CSS interface quite a bit here today. So you've got custom CSS that can be found under the skin menu. And then you have the skin editor that can be found under the skin menu. And the skin editor takes you to the newly revamped um, interface for essentially for the skin editor. It's been changed quite a bit. The first section here is the, uh, the HTML section. And then the second is CSS, then Images, Manager, Canvas, and then uh, Thesis. So we're going to start off here in HTML Editor. The HTML Editor <coughs> essentially has five sections. The first section is the menu, um, the, the template selector. If you click on the word Home here, or this is indicating that we are working on the Home template right now. If you click on Home, you can see all of the core templates plus the custom template and the add new custom template and the copy from template dialog. So you've got this essentially the template selector that you get when you click on this home and if you choose say the page template here this will change from the home template to the page template. Okay so this is where you're where you're gonna choose the template that you're working on. The second part is kind of hidden until you hover over here, and that is the template options. If you click on this, uh, that's a little gear shift right here, right? This little gear shift right there is template options. Each template has its own set of options. The template options is this dialog, and, and each template has its own set of options, and there are, depending upon what you're doing, there are different kinds of options for different templates. So. Uh, so in any case, uh, this is the second part is the template options. Third part is the template layout, and that's this thing here. All right, this is the template layout, and we're going to spend a whole bunch of time talking about the template layout. But um, this is the template layout, and then you have your box builder, and we'll talk up quite a bit about the box builder here in a few minutes as well. But uh, this is sort of a box builder slash box library. It it gives you the opportunity both to choose which boxes you want to create um, from scratch and then which boxes that have already been created that you can uh, just simply add to your template that aren't currently used in the template. So that's your box builder slash toolbox. And then this is the trash essentially. Um, if you want to delete a box entirely, you can simply just drag it over here to the trash and um, it'll get thrown away. So that's the five sections of the HTML editor. If we come over to the CSS editor, the CSS editor has uh, three sections. You have skin CSS, which is uh, in this case, in Classic Responsive, all of the CSS associated with the skin. Um, that is, this is all of Chris Pearson's CSS. And um, then you have the variables. And these variables show up 
here. That's what this dollar sign font, dollar sign F text, dollar sign H text. Those are variable references inside of uh, Chris's CSS. And as it turns out, these variable references are also tied directly into um, uh, the content and design options. All right, so for example, site background color here is FFF, right? If we come back over to our skin editor and CSS and look at colors, um, color 3 is the skin background color, which is FFF. If you change that here, let's call it red. If you change it to red here, oh, where'd I go? Color 3. Change it to red. Save the CSS. That actually is going to change the background color to red. And if we go over to the, uh, the design section, you'll see our little... Oh, isn't that interesting? Oh, okay, there's a bug. Well, there, isn't that interesting? Okay, that should actually have gone to red. We're going to go ahead and save that design option again. And we'll turn it back to white, which it should be. There we go. So um, that's something I had not noticed before. There is an interoperability, though, between the two. So, okay, so back to CSS. Okay, um, so these are your variables. You can create a new variable here. When you create a variable, you give it a name and a reference and a value. And we'll talk more about actually creating your own variables. We're going to talk about that tomorrow. We're not, we won't, I mean, on Friday, we won't be talking about creating your own variables today. Uh, the third section is the packages section. This is something that is a holdover from 2.1. And if you're using a skin that was designed and built in 2.1, the chances are you have a whole bunch of packages. Um, and packages do get added to skin CSS in exactly the same way as they used to. So if you've got a package, it's going to have its reference here in CS, skin CSS, and that reference will be automatically converted into the actual CSS package. So, uh, but we're not going to spend any time talking about packages here today because they won't be available to you in 2.2, so you may as well not get used to them here in 2.1. The next section is images, and uh, images has a couple of play sections. One is, you know, to upload your image, you choose your file and add the image. And then you've got your image library, which shows a little thumbnail of the image, plus gives you the reference for the image and its height and width and the ability to delete it. So it's your image. Your manager um, allows you to back up your skin where you are in a specific location and if you back it up it comes down here to the it comes down to the section of backups um, you can import skin data from another site and you can restore store the skins defaults um, this is exactly the same as it was in 2.0 and if you have any interest in 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 understanding how this works, go ahead and watch the videos I have on using the Skin Manager uh, in 2.0. A new innovation is the canvas now does not automatically open all the time. Those of you uh, who are familiar with 2.0 had the canvas always opening. The canvas is a tool that you can use to preview uh, to preview changes that you've made to your site uh, in your uh, skin editor. However, at this at the moment, it's not flawless. For example, these things are showing up even though they're not actually there. And the CSS that was created to display the footer widgets in the correct location also is not um, showing. So at the moment, we're not really using the this, although I'm guessing that by the time this becomes live, the little glitches here in the canvas will be removed. And then, of course, you have the thesis button, which takes you back to the main thesis interface, or th takes you back to thesis home. Now, oh, I just wanted to do one other thing here under the skin editor. 
I just wanted to show you how how to manipulate or manage these boxes because there's just a little bit of dexterity that's necessary in order for this stuff to work. Each one of these things represents a box, so the container, if you hover over it, you can see what that box contains, right? The container contains everything, and then header only contains header. You can expand, well, actually, let's do this first. You can contract, you know, the, the contents of your container, so you can see just the container, or you can expand it. Uh, each box has, uh, well, most boxes have an expand or show hide box contents and also box options. If you click on the box options, then it brings up the options available for the box, similar to the template options. Okay. Um, and if you open up, for example, open up the header, you can see that there's a site title and a site tagline inside the header. And there are a couple of kinds of uh, dragging operations. The most common dragging operation is one that moves stuff from one box to another. So if you were going to say move the header into the columns, you would shift and then click and drag. And the thing that you are, can drop it into is showing up in bright yellow. So right now, because columns is bright yellow, it could be dropped there. Here, now that it's in content columns, it could be dropped here. Or it could be dropped in WP loop. Or in home post box. Notice nav menu does not change color because you can't drop the header into the nav menu. You could also bring it over here and drop it here to remove it. Or bring it here and drop it there to delete it. Okay, so it's shift drag to move it from one container to another. And then just drag to move it inside the container, right? Both the header and the nav menu and the columns and the footer are inside the container. And so to move the nav menu to the bottom of the container, all you have to do is just drag, right? Just click and drag. So that's how things move around. Okay, so you have shift drag to move stuff. From one, from one box to another and drag to rearrange things inside the box.